Welcome, everybody, to Face the Facts. It's great to have you all here once again. I am all bundled up because it's now getting cold outside, but we have a lot of things that are cooking for our four big teams here in Boston. We have our Patriots with a great win against the Indianapolis Colts this past Sunday, so we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the Bruins, who continue to surge through a wonderful beginning of their season. We will also talk about the World Series winner, which is the Houston Astros, and preview a little bit of what's going to happen this offseason with some teams. And then, sorry, Phil, I ha- the Boston Celtics, yes, they uh, also deserve to be mentioned. I'm sorry I put them as fourth. They don't deserve to be fourth on the talking list. We'll talk about that, too. Before we begin, we'll welcome in Phil Healy. Phil, how are you doing today? Hey, Nick, I'm doing all right. Uh, as you had said off air, uh, week's kind of blurred. I forget today is Wednesday. It feels more like a Tuesday or later. It's very bizarre. The last two days felt like a couple days, but I'm doing all right. Thanks for having us on. This is this is one of those times where you got the holidays that are sneaking up. You have kids not being in school more than, they, more than possible. So you have lots of in-service days, conference days, Veterans Day is coming up, Thanksgiving, of course. And then you got... Christmas and the holidays, which would be here with like a snap of the fingers. So lots of great things that are happening. Um, one of those things is the New England Patriots. So they had a great victory against the Colts this past weekend. It was a defensive effort from Matthew Judon and Josh Uche with three sacks each on the defense to propel the Patriots back to over 500. So that was pretty cool to see. Did you get a chance to see any of the game? I did. I, I got to see a good portion of it. I actually, and uh, the guy who continues to impress me, a rookie, I believe, uh, Jones. Is it Jonathan? No, not Johnny. Uh, I forget. Uh, uh, Jonathan it... Jones. Jonathan, Jonathan Jones, Jones. Uh, with the interception with a punch block. Well, wait, is that is he a rookie, Jonathan Jones? Or is he, or have we, no, we've had a Jonathan Jones before. I forget. That, I... Yeah, I think it's, Um, I think this is his second year. Second oh, okay. year within the league from everything, but that was a monumental play in the game. Yeah. That was the uh, pretty much the kill shot for the Colts. I, th- <laughs> I think yeah, they had them pretty much dead dead to rights. It was like nineteen to six, I think, right? And then with like maybe like six minutes left, but then it was just like insult to injury, like you said, it was a death knell. Uh, so I mean, it, it was pretty nuts, and that's a second like uh, pick six. The second one exactly. Uh, yeah, I believe. Yeah. So, so they kinda, they yeah, did nuts. a heck of a job from that performance. I personally think Matt Judon is going to end up potentially breaking the record for regular season here for the Patriots and the most sacks in the season from everything. His yeah, performance is he is a stud yeah. on that defense. No, he he's great and he's been and Uche. I'm glad he's one of those guys who was like you know hot or not. Like uh, last year, and this is second year, I believe. Too was he a guy? Was he a guy from uh, Alabama? I, or yeah, no? I believe this is the second year, also within the league. So I know last year when I think when he was on, he was able to make a, a difference of sorts. But uh, it's good to see those two, like in tandem, going after the Colts. Doing now, a I nice mean, job, I, right? Yeah, it would. But I also, you know, who knows? The Colts aren't really their offense isn't that good, but uh, their defense is decent. Um, we talked on um, isn't that good either. <laughs> we talked on our podcast that we did a little bit earlier this week about how the Colts have been such a joke of a franchise ever since Spygate and everything came out from not Spygate to Flategate, excuse me. They've gone through six quarterbacks since 2019. So that includes Andrew Luck, now Matt Ryan. We also talked about how Matt Ryan should still be in the game. I mean, let's be honest here. This Sam Ellinger guy. If that's their future, they are in tough shape because he just does not look like anything of significance to this team right now. Mm. They've also gone through Carson Wentz and Nick Foles is also the backup over there. Well, they had two two guys that are that are that have been around the league and know what they're doing. Nick Foles and Matt Ryan. And obviously those two aren't good enough to, to get in there. I know they're thinking future and everything, but if that's the future of the Colts. If I'm one of those fans, I jump ship. Well, it's also who knows, not necessarily like Tank of Palooza, but who knows what they're thinking as far as like let's just ride the season out. Could be. And if they if they, you know, try to win a handful of games, 
what will be the point in the sense of like, well, you're going to get, I mean, you're not going to make the playoffs or even if you do just make the playoffs, what's it, what are you looking to do? But I mean, Correct. give the kids some experience, see what happens. But I, you know, it doesn't look that good. I mean, no offense on Sunday really <laughs> looked that good. Although the pass no. got into like, uh, they got into <clears throat> inside the 20, uh, the red zone about uh, like, was it three or four times or four times maybe? I think they so got that a good was amount. My... That was my other concern that I have. So I'm glad you talked. I'm glad you mentioned the offense because it was very lackluster once again. And you get Mac Jones under center again. He was passable, I will say. I'm concerned with what the next step's going to be here for Mac Jones because I look at this season as a regress so far. That's what I look at. I know he has. A new set of circumstances this year without Josh McDaniels and everything. You get Matt Pencil Boy Patricia as your offensive coordinator leading the charge on that. But I'm not very impressed. The offensive line was, again, not very good. Cole Strange got benched, and that is also not a great sign from things to do. So my question here is, what is the future? Can the Patriots get by with what they have? And what would you do to solve it? I mean, I guess uh, <laughs> get new coaching. <laughs> I mean, right, that, that, that could be one thing, and I think, and Belichick... it might be somebody might be knocking on the door because yeah, the uh, Raiders are not doing oh. well under the leadership of Mister McDaniel's. I think they're two and six, right? Is they are. They are and I was I was watching that too because I watched like the last play of that game too, and I was like, you know, I was rooting for him. I'm not gonna lie, I was rooting for uh, McDaniel's to kind of yeah. make it happen. It seemed like the Raiders head coaching career yeah and it seemed like the Raiders weren't a bad choice either I mean you have a car and a, a pretty decent set of weapons they got I think Parker who they get they got um they signed a receiver Devontae there. Adams wasn't and Devontae it? Adams yep you're right yeah. from uh, the Packers uh, boy could yeah, Aaron Rodgers use him not to oh. not to go off tracks here but no 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 that's another story similar. for another day but no for for the Pats I mean yeah you probably better offensive play calling probably it's just being more inventive and trying to figure out what they can do and what they have. I mean, I the line, like you said, the line is kind of, you know, lackluster right now. And they got to figure that out. And it looks like Belichick will probably step in. I mean, they have a bye this week. So next week or the week after, we'll see what, because uh, I forget who they're facing the week after. I think uh, maybe the Buffalo. Jets. Well, the, the Jets, Jets again. The Jets Ooh. again. This schedule is very weird this season. They go it back is. to backs on a lot of teams with the Jets. We haven't even played the Bills yet. No, I know we no. played them. I think the day before Christmas or something like oh, that. Oh, cool. That's a and fun then one. it's uh, the, I think it's uh, week was it week fifteen, sixteen? We play the Bills again. Yeah. I would rather have it more spread out, beginning and end, instead of all clumped into one. Yeah. Just seems messy to me. But yeah, they have to get ready because they're on a bye week. I'm glad you mentioned the bye. I think it comes at a good time for this team to get healthy and. Maybe we'll get Damian Harris back too to give them yeah. a little bit of speed and boost to the running game. I'm not saying that uh, Demontre Stevenson uh, has not been very good. He has been a very effective Arande. at least for the page. Ar- Miranda Stevenson, yeah. Oh yeah, I forget. Uh, I I butcher his name too. I I'm hoping that they can get a two headed beast in a way back with those two being somewhat of a propelling charge for the offense. The Bright spot that I did see, which I need to see more of with Mac Jones, is hitting the tight ends. So Jonu Smith, he had a nice reception mm. with, and Hunter Henry, he also connected with on one of his drives. That needs to be utilized more. I wanted to go back to the days of when you, you had the Gronkowski, uh, Aaron Hernandez kind of set, or you or who was there, our other guy that we had when we won the championship. Oh, Martellus oh, Bennett. That's Martellus Bennett as one. Yeah. yeah, back in that, back in those kinds of uh, offensive sets. So let's see how we do from that, and hopefully the buy comes at a good time and we get ourselves in a much better spot. Um, I want to go around the NFL because Tom Brady needs to be talked about with the Bucks yep. uh, against sure. the Rams. That was one heck of a performance. Not that we've not seen this time and time again. But with no timeouts, with 51 seconds left on the clock, the Bucs were trailing. Was it 13-9? I think so. Brady, Brady was able to get the job done and Just lead the team to a must-win game against the Rams, I must say. Very impressive. Looked like Brady of old. 
led the team with no time basically on the clock, got it done, and got the got the Bucks back into a situation that it, it, they're in a much better place than they were right now. Yeah, I was uh, I overheard a statistic regarding uh, Brady's comebacks over the year and fourth quarter comebacks, sixty eight yeah. of them throughout his career. I know it's twenty years. Well, it's great, and it, someone broke it down too. It's like you're talking uh, sixteen games a season, so you're talking about at least at least four at least four seasons worth of fourth quarter comebacks. Correct, and that's 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 insane. I mean, that's uh, and it, it poisons. It perished the thought. Like we, he could have had him for another couple more years. But I mean, you know what? Here we are. We got to build sometime. But uh, yeah, no, it was. It's pretty insane to, to think he's uh, passed uh, with a hundred thousand uh, career uh, passing yards too. It's just nuts. And yeah, they're in a better spot now. They're in a really uh, uncompetitive uh, conference. I think they're in. Uh, I think they're tied. Is it either with Carolina or? The Saints? No, not oh yeah. Why? I it's, think it's uh yeah, Carolina and the Saints. I mean, the division's open for anybody, truthfully, with yeah. how yeah. mediocre that division's been. So I think the Bucks will will get the number one spot. I do, after mm-hmm. the adjustments made, and they'll be in the consideration again for being in the playoffs and see if they can get the job done. Yeah, I, I mean, I have I have total faith. Yeah, it's them and the, oh the Falcons. I'm sorry, the Falcons and them and uh, the Saints are. Behind three and it's one six. of the worst divisions in football. It yeah, is. it really it's is one of the worst divisions in football. It's crazy, and then and you it's have... weird because back yeah. in the day, you know, you had your Drew Brees, you had a much mm-hmm. better situation than you do currently right now. But it's yeah. open for Brady. It's open for the Bucks. So we'll see what happens from that. Um, the other rum uh, news that's in the rumor mill is a potential return again, coming out of retirement, of Rob Kronkowski. What do you chalk that up as? A lot of smoke, no fire. You think it happens, doesn't happen. What do you think? Yeah, let's see what he has to sell. Yeah, right. <laughs> let's see what product is coming out on the market. We've seen this. We've seen this promote. time and time again. I think that it's very difficult to tell Tom Brady no, and I think that they could be in a position where they it, it's a it's a need for the Bucks to get them to a championship level team. They definitely could use Rob Gronkowski. It's just a matter of if if they uh, actually put the pedal to the metal and make it happen. They seem to be incredibly loaded to begin with. It's it's just so crazy that like they they feel a need. But I mean, hey, loaded but back. yet still like struggling too with injuries and inconsistencies and dropping the yeah. balls and stuff like that. So we'll have to see what happens from uh the rest of the season to see if, if anything comes from that. Uh, the Jets and the Bills, very shocking game of the weekend with the Jets beating the Bills. It was a very poor game from Josh Allen, who we found out after my the fantasy game, team. Yes. I'm sorry for your fantasy <laughs> team. Yeah. Rip Phil's fantasy team. Uh, we found out that there's some sort of an issue with the elbow of Josh Allen's throwing arm. Very concerning for the Bills. It's uh, still to be determined on what happens from any kind of issue with it, whether he plays through it, whether he has to set out surgery, that's a big impact for the bills, big impact, but the jets pulling off that victory. That was shocking to me. Uh, yeah, no, that was great. I mean, it, it's kind of weird because they're the jets to us. And, but also for, yeah. we forget at the beginning of the Belichick Brady dynasty or whatever you want to call it, like the jets were a problem. Yep. Uh, for the first couple of handful of years, and even before that, and there was a crazy, oh, don't mind me, they're uh, doing work on my little hut. So you'll hear uh, uh, some pounding and some sawing. But uh, yeah, no, it's. I'm glad the Jets are back to form as being like a defensive team to, uh, to reckon with and just fearless. And even last year, they had they gave us runs for our money, even the last like couple years. As much as they are the Jets, like, they'll always be there. They'll always be a nuisance, and they're always um, I had a little puppy just eating waiting. a pen. He's oh good. no, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> got to take care. Got to that take care of that. That is not a stick. <laughs> not a stick. Not a good cleanup situation. No, no. But uh, yeah, no. The Jets. I. It's surprising. Yeah, because I, I think the Bills are the team. And if Josh Allen isn't, if he has like a was it uh, pretty much was a UCL injury. Is that what they call UCL? It? Like, so I mean, I was talking to a buddy of mine. He's like, yeah, that's not a that's no joke. If it's like on the lighter end of that, that's at least four weeks. 
mm-hmm. like rehab and stuff like that. And if it's something more serious, then you're talking possibly the season. So who yep. knows? And that's unfortunate because the Bills, as we all know, were kind of favored. One of the handful of teams that you're thinking, oh, they're going to get over the hump. They're going to make it. They'll beat Kansas City. Because honestly, they should have beat Kansas City last year. But yeah. the defense couldn't stop. You know, their offense was unstoppable. Uh, and so Kansas City, too, give all the credit to Mahomes and them. But, uh, yeah, it just they were they were kind of let down. But, yeah, I, I also think it's as you might remember, it's a tragic story. The Bills franchise it is four in a row, uh, you know, never quite making it as a but, Patriots fan. Know. It's it's always gratifying to see stuff like that happen and go down. <laughs> Um, the other surprise within the division was Miami. I know the Bears are a joke, but the Patriots lost to them. So how much of a joke can they be? Uh, Miami with the 35-32 victory. So the division now still has the Bills one game ahead. You have a tie between the Jets and Miami. And still the Patriots are in last at 5-4. and four. But that is open season now for any of these teams. The Patriots get the victory yeah. next, uh, not next week, but the week after on November 20th against the Jets. They're right on track. They're right on track. Again, I'm going to say it's a must-win game for the Patriots. This next uh, November 20th game they have. We'll have to see what happens. The rest of the league, you saw Green Bay losing to the Lions. I am officially put it, waving the flag on the Green Bay Packers. They're done. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers is done as a Green Bay Packer. Whether that's uh, a retirement that comes or another team to be determined. Um, the last thing I did want to mention, I want to go back at you. To the Wait, I just want to tell you, I want to add, I think Aaron Rodgers has waved the flag. I don't think yeah, he's done. to do it for him. He's done. No doubt. Before I close the chapter on the Bills Jets, I do want to read this incredible statistic that is going to make your eyes pop out of your sockets. So listen to this. Josh Allen's record dropped to two and seven after that loss this past Sunday in one scoring game since 2021. It gives him the third worst winning percentage in such games amongst quarterbacks with at least five starts. Wow. wow. Yeah, that I had no idea. I, maybe it's just because they are involved in so many blowouts that you don't really consider that. Maybe? And this does not include the playoffs. This wow. is regular season from everything, too. I was so going to say, I could that add sink two in. games. Yeah. That wow. is not that is not Tom Brady. Uh, that is not Tom Brady esque right there. No, so, that's not crunch time. No, it is not. Wow. The last one I wanted to mention, um, we did have the Eagles were on the bye. The Vikings continued to win. They improved to twenty and seventeen uh, this past uh, this past week. They are now seven and one in the league. And Delvin Cook is on my team. Yeah. So I'm a fan, and he's doing yeah. pretty well. <laughs> oh, Nick, I think he's yelling at his dog and or an employee. Was that a dog or was that an employee you were yelling that at? Was a, that was a attacking of a puppy. He is brutal oh. today. No, oh, no, wow. no, no. All right, you back we go. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, no, that's – yeah, Minnesota's been a great uh, story, too. We'll see where they go. And we'll see where it all it all comes down the wall. And Seattle too. Seattle's been insane too. They're sitting at six and three, uh, top of the NFC West. And who knew getting rid of uh you know one of the best quarterbacks in the league would do that for you? Meanwhile, you have uh, Denver sitting at what was it three and five, which is very disappointing for uh for Russell in that game. Because that's you would have thought they would have uh, had a good recipe for success there. Yeah, you would have. But that's the story on how the rest of the NFL goes. I do want to change our gears and go with our talk of the Bruins. We're going to go around the rink. Uh, The Bruins this past week, just to let our fans know of how things went. um, It was a a good and then a disaster of a PR decision mixed into everything that went down with the Bruins. So last week, the Bruins came from behind to win against the Penguins 6-5. You had a 5-2 victory against the Rangers. That was last Thursday night's game. You did have a loss against the Maple Leafs this past Sunday. It was a 2-1 score. I still liked what I saw from that game. You had a Brad Marchand penalty shot goal, which was pretty exciting. However, there was a massive, massive PR hit to the team this past week with the signing of a player by the name of Mitchell Miller. I don't know how much you heard about this, Phil. I don't know if you know the backstory on it, but it was 
a signing that never sh- should have happened. It was a signing that the homework was not done between Cam Neely and Don Sweeney. And it a- absolutely blew up in their face. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I heard all about it uh, on the radio and every week. I couldn't avoid it. And I just was like kind of flabbergasted by, uh, you know, bits of uh, a good chunk of what was going on. And listen, I, you know, sometimes people need to vet all this stuff. I mean, not everyone's a god. Not everyone can just like do everything nope. at once. But you know, there there are certain things you're like, eh, maybe <laughs> if this this kid and I get kid, he's an adult with a twenty twenty one. It was yeah. This happened in middle school, I believe, when he was fourteen years old. It was a story that resulted in racism, hazing, bullying that never came with an apology. It was thrown under the rug. It was never addressed. And this all came out when the Arizona Coyotes drafted Mitchell Miller about a year ago in their draft. And Mm -hmm. they had to release him, and they didn't end up signing him. The Bruins wanted to take a chance. And I'm all about taking a chance under the right circumstances from everything. But as a person who strives with leading my life with great character, great example setting, great just family oriented kind of mentality in your atmosphere of whatever your working environment is or your team or your professional standpoint, the Bruins failed miserably on not doing their homework and thinking that they could get away with signing a player of this caliber. I mean, it it, it was, it was uh, one of the worst PR hits. I think a team could have taken after such an incredible start, now you got people talking about you and saying that your team, your Boston Bruins are uh, not a character kind of team. And I think Patrice Bergeron and Krejci and all the good that comes from that team, thankfully stood up to management and said, we're not standing for this. We are not bringing this player into our team. You get rid of him. And I applaud the team for having that stance. So kudos oh, well, that's, to them. That's amazing. I didn't hear about that. That's yeah, kind of great. They went, They marched right up and said, this is unacceptable. We are not standing for this. I'm a person that I'm not perfect. I know you're not perfect, Phil. This, it, there are mistakes that get made in life. You make mistakes. You grow from them. You adapt. My philosophy is you don't make the same mistakes twice. This was repeatedly, repeatedly done and never was handled in the way it should have been. I would never have given this person another chance, not on this team, not on a team that is so poised and driven right now to lead this, to get this team to a Stanley cup champion style team. You do not need that around your team. So thankfully he was released. I hope we can forget this sad story in the Bruins history and continue to be positive with the outlook on how this team has looked. Yeah, I think, listen, I think the important thing is, as like you're saying, is uh, players and other aspects of administration and management recognize the fault and stood up to what they, they wanted to be represented as, as far as a team and an ideology. And as you say, as, as someone that could, um, as an organization that could hold their head up high and just say, we, we back all of our guys and all of our, everyone in our organization, we vet. And this was just someone they didn't really fully, they were taking a chance on and didn't maybe fully understand the situation of which surrounded him, you know? And that's kind of, and I I hear all these. You've got to do your homework on all different sorts of things. And you know, the sad part here is that, All you had to do was Google this guy's name and all you had to do was figure out, okay, this guy comes with a lot of baggage. Why are we going to give this, uh, this opportunity to our team? You don't need that. You just don't need that around your team. So I'm happy that this is chapters closed and now the Bruins will be moving forward with the rest of their busy week. They had the Bruins did get a great victory Monday night. That was, uh, I was against the St. Louis blues, a little rematch of 2019 Old friend Tory Krug uh, returned to the garden with his group. The Blues have not had a great start to their season. 
The Bruins got a 3-1 victory. You saw a goal from Jake DeBrusque. You saw an awesome goal from Patrice Bergeron from the bumper position. And then you also had a Trent Frederick hustle goal. Another great start from Linus Olmark. He just looks tremendous. He's doing incredible behind the pipes for the Bruins. And this is a team that doesn't even have Charlie McAvoy back yet. So when he gets back and he becomes another anchor to this team in his tremendous defensive style play, I couldn't be more excited for a team right now. I get, I, I, you know how I am with, with sometimes I'm pessimistic on how certain things look and, I love this team right now. They are must watch. They are must see. They are driven to get to that next point. This team looks awesome. Let's keep and hope that they stay healthy and get to that next level. Yeah, no, that actually, listen, they are the talk of the town and they should be. They should uh, for be. Good, for good yep. and bad reasons. Uh, but at first, that very good reasons because they're, like you say, they're, heat check man they're they're crazy good right now and when you said it to me at the beginning when i think when they were like three and one or so i don't know i forget it was like very early on it was like oh it was like a couple weeks ago yeah and you're like I, you're like i like this team i like what they're doing i think they're very special and you know yep. everyone leading up to the season was like yeah you know they'll be seventh seed and i think i said that too everyone's expectations were kind of not basement level but kind of real moderate moderately realistic but i think it's also it's always great to see a team surprise you. Yep. And there's potential. The, the the core, the core ish is here from the last like decade of Bruins, which is funky to say. It's yep. crazy because we're talking about a championship team from 2011 that still has you still have Bergeron, you still have uh, Marshan, Marshan, and Krejci now Krejci and everything. Yeah. So you have the you have manpower elements. to get this done. The last thing I want to mention here on the Bruins point, I actually got two things I want to mention. The week ahead, you have the rest of the week. You have Thursday against the Flames. You have Saturday against the Sabres, Sunday against the Canucks. I have one more gripe I need to mention. And Phil, you'll probably agree on this because you're a person that enjoys the local feeds. You enjoy the local broadcasts. So I have a rant that I need to air out my dirty laundry with. Oh, please, let me get my popcorn. So this past week, you had only one game on Nesson. Only one. ESPN had the game Tuesday against the Penguins. And then Thursday, you got shoved to ESPN Plus or Disney app to watch the freaking game. Here's my feeling on the matter. As somebody who pays for their own cable and somebody who wants to pop that game on my TV and watch it in peace and listen to my local feeds whether it's jack edwards andy brickley whether it's the red sox feed of dave o'brien and eck and whoever's sitting in as the uh, color commentary whether it's the celtics listen to sean grandy or uh scalabrini or of course um mike gorman you are unable to do that consistently fans you are unable to do that anymore because of how our world operates with our stupid subscriptions to these freaking apps that are becoming an absolute joke to our society. A joke to pay for individual games that you have to, oh, let me get my passcode here. Oh, can I authorize this one? Oh, swipe back. Password reset. Password expired 30 days. Which app is this on now? Is it Netflix night? Is it Hulu night? Is it uh, Apple TV night? Oh, let me get my Amazon Prime subscription. Let me make sure I have enough in my pay code here in my Apple device to make sure I can authorize this. Press this button to do it. Make sure the face ID is good. That is our freaking world we live in. And that is sick. That is sick on what it's doing to the fan bases out there. And I have had it when it comes to American people like us being taken advantage of to watch a game in our own leisure. And it has to stop. So how it stops is the fans need to voice their displeasure on how this is trending in our world. Use your voice and use it right. 
Otherwise, these stupid apps and these stupid things that we continue to see in our world will overtake you and you will end up being bankrupt. And yeah, over. it's all right. I mean, I think one of the things about as people don't know how to or there isn't like we don't know how to kind of fit all this stuff into a schedule that that makes it easier for people to go from from our earlier generation. I'm I'm turning 40 on Friday. And I remember it was just kind of like when I was growing up, you had in the late 80s, early 90s, even even forward into the 2000s, you had uh you know, you, you had either a, a kind of, a, you had ESPN, you had a sport, you had your local sports channel, maybe. And you also had like, you know, like some of the local channels for news and everything in like Fox that would show like football, basketball, and, you know, uh, hockey, baseball games, all depends who would buy the rights to it. So now like everything is in flux because there's so many players there to, and there's a, more money flown around or thrown around to kind of cement, uh, like an app's idea of someone who would grab something like I'll throw non sport related, but similar, uh, the new weird Al uh, fake biop pick mm -hmm. called weird, uh, which I'm still yet to see. You have to, you can watch it for free online. Just go to Roku channel.com or whatever. But if you want to watch it on your TV, you either get a browser or hook up, you know, your computer to the TV. You have to have a Roku. Uh, you have to have a Roku. Uh, to watch it so i mean it's not the worst and it's one of those things where it's just kind of like there's a lot of hoops for people to go through and it just there's a lot more self-management there uh it just it, sometimes they don't make it easier for people and consumers it's, corrupt. I, it's corruption it's well, taking advantage i don't know of if it's people. corruption i think it's more or less just they're monopolizing a, they're monopolizing it would be, on us fans so we can enjoy a game but they get more money in their pocket so, after I'm, you mean all like the money the, the that leagues? you already pay for if you get cable yeah i mean the the leagues you can say because of all the contracts they're getting to license out their games or the, to sell their license for for playing and replaying their games sure you can say they're i mean that's money that's their business and it's not whether it's good or not that's the other thing i mean it's like that's capitalism which it's poopy on its own right yes, but it, it was uh, it would be a monopoly if it was only one thing showing everything that's what a true monopoly is which isn't you know i there are many ways to go about it, but it, there's got to be a way to make it easier to make it more uh, streamlined. But yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't necessarily disagree with the heart of what you're saying. If I was a local broadcaster, if I was Jack Edwards, Andy Brickley, if I was Mike Gorman, I would be so livid with what's gone on with losing rights and losing the chance to call the all these games because all these subscription services out there have their own team of broadcasters who have absolutely no clue on how to pronounce the names of some of these players, how to call the game correctly. The local flair is gone. You hardly have games on your local television network now. You hardly do. And that's not right. Like, I at least will say for the NBA, when they have ESPN Game of the Week or whatever it is on most nights, unless it's not on ABC, you get the local feed for the Celtics. You could watch it there or you could watch ESPN. Hockey is not doing that, and that is really frustrating, really frustrating. It makes you legitimately want to just put your radio broadcast on and listen to the guys, you know, Cedric Maxwell or uh, Bob Beers and Judd Surratt that are do the game for the Bruins and just listen to it there. It's a little bit of a delay, but at least you have your local – You know, I, I like to be educated when I listen to a game. I like the fans – I like their input because they know the team. They know how to call it. You know what you want to hear from them. When these national people come in, I call I call it the the the. They're just a joke. They don't know what they're calling. They're just a, a robot in a way. And for somebody who went to school as a broadcaster that learned the ins and outs of how to do things the right way, this is not the right way. You need to give the fans the option of what they want. Instead of all this monopolizing and capitalism getting away with taking away the local flair of these games. I do want to go next to the Celtics. The Celtics are off to a six and actually now it's seven and three start. Seven and after three. Yeah. A great victory. 
against the Grizzlies. I don't know yeah. if I want to say great though, Phil. I <laughs> don't know if I can say that because no, that was a sloppy mess the last three minutes of that game. I did get a chance to watch oh, the Memphis Grizzlies game. I agree. I was with you. very disappointed with the lack of three throw three throw shooting at the line that was missed. And the Celtics almost threw that game away, I will say. They almost did. But they got the win. I'll take it. And they they are a bright spot. They look very good with the challenges that surrounded them at the start of the season. They had another nice win against the Bulls and the Knicks this past week. I'm happy with it. Can they be better? Absolutely. One of those things they could be better with is hopefully getting Robert Williams back sooner rather than later. Right now, he is on schedule to return for December. My whole opinion on this, and I think you know from just talking on the show from it before, I would rather Robert Williams be gone till February and have him fully healthy so these same injuries don't continue to happen to him. Right right now, to me, he is injury prone, and I can't see him being a part of the Celtics' future if he continues to get hurt the way he's doing. And they need him. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. If they, you're going to need him most um, for the long haul. So, I mean, even if you have like an eight to tw- 12 week kind of uh, situation going, you got two months maybe or a little less. Uh, yeah, you no need to rush, especially if you're winning games right now. I mean, you need to learn how to play defense without him. And they're doing okay at spots. But like you said, at the end of the Grizzly game or against, yeah, against Memphis, they let it they slip a bit. They got complacent. Well, it's also, yep. it's just, Maybe you got tired legs. Maybe you don't have enough rotation for big men. And Blake Griffin's been getting some good minutes, and he's been hustling. And it's actually it, it shows people are hustling. Uh, and, but sometimes at the end of games, maybe people are just they're just my too biggest gas. bright spot on the Celtics this season has been the emergence of Sam Hauser. This yeah, is a great addition. Yeah, this gets me excited. And the reason it gets me excited is because here's a guy that can come off the bench, or if he starts, or whatever is in the mix from it. He's shooting incredible. My question here, Phil, is, is this sustainable? Uh, I think it's sustainable enough. He's shooting well, but it's also like he's moving the ball around. He's not as much of a defensive liability. He is and he isn't. Um, Very similar to uh, Gallinari in the sense of like, well, not, I would say as a three-point shooter, not necessarily as getting his own shot around the hoop as Gallinari would have been. But it's a similar, like, kind of slide-in uh, replacement for uh, what we lost in Gallinari to his injury. I right. I think it's a nice bright spot. I think Brogdon, when he's aggressive, is a great spot because that uh, your second unit could becomes more alive, and you're able to, you're able to switch things around, and you're able to have Brogdon at the end of games if you need. And yep. Horford will come around too. He's been he's been doing pretty well. He actually last game he had like three or four threes too. They had was it against Memphis or was it against? I think it was against, no, maybe they had like a franchise record. Maybe it was against the Knicks. I figured they had like a franchise record, like in a number of threes that they hit. And like everyone on that floor usually can hit from the outside. That team is, is stacked for that. Yep. And they just need to clamp down. If they, you're still getting high scoring games uh, ish, but you've still got to clamp down a little bit at the end. Like they let a nine point lead kind of fizzle away and fizzle away. They yeah, went in that last yeah. four, that last three minutes, they were going without a basket, I guess, in the last three minutes or something like that. You had Tatum missing at the line. You had Jalen Brown missing at the line. Marcus Smart missed. You can't do that. So hopefully we'll see a little bit more consistency out of this group. The Celtics, the rest of the week, will have the Pistons. They're back at the Garden for Wednesday evening. The next game for them after that will be against the Nuggets. That will be Friday night. The Celtics then play again the Pistons in Detroit on Saturday night. And that's the rest of the week for the Boston Celtics. Very quickly, I just want to mention that the Houston Astros were the World Series champions. The championship goes to the Astros this past uh, year for baseball. I was rooting for the Phillies. I wanted to see Dombrowski and Kyle Schwarber going to get the award. I'm happy for Christian Vasquez. Jeremy Pena ended up being the MVP. I'll be honest, I didn't watch that much of it. I kind of followed it a little bit. There's just so much going on from everything. I'm not the biggest Houston Astro fan in the world. Amazingly, this is only their second championship since 2017. They've kind of been in the kind of in the Dodgers. It's kind of like a Dodgers kind of thing. They're always there. They just couldn't get over the hump. They got over the hump this year without a Carlos Correa. 
So that was pretty interesting to see from that. Now begins the free agency period for baseball. So my last couple things I want to mention on our program here is um, just a free agent outlook here. The Boston Red Sox have a lot of work to do. They have a lot of money that's coming off the books, but yet they have a lot of things they got to get done. One of those things is the question on where Xander Bogarts is going to fit into this team. What do you think, Phil? Let's say it's March 2023, spring training. Is Xander Bogarts a Boston Red Sox? I mean, I hope so. Uh, do I think he will be? I I don't know. I don't think I. If they want, but also if they want to get rid of him, they should have gotten rid of him this year. They should have. They should have. But who knows? Like, I, just because they didn't make the move doesn't mean like they're not gonna get rid of him. You know what I mean? That's and then too, I just wanted to quickly touch on the Astros. Yeah, as much as that, people don't. You know, and nationally, you shouldn't give a crap about the uh, Astros per se because of a lot of things surrounding them I mean and they're very Patriots-esque in the way that they've been hanging around like you said the Dodgers I'd, I'd, I'd say they're I'd say they're better than the Dodgers in the sense that they've been there the past yeah the, I agree uh, with you X amount of years but they've won this is the second time they've won and the first one for Dust uh, what was it uh, what's Dusty the, the Baker man, Dusty Baker thank you the old manager of the Cincinnati Reds and of uh, happy the Giants him. Yeah, I am too. He took over after what his name had to be fired for the scandalous, uh, like sign stealing stuff. But honestly, like if anything, even after all that stuff uh, came and went, they went to the World Series two more times. They did. And and I listen, they're one of the better teams of uh, this decade. And uh, who knows? Uh, we talk about the Bruins core. You got Bregman. You got uh, Alt- Altuve. And uh, Correa, is that who wasn't with them this year? Or? Correa was with the Twins this past season. The Twins, season. yeah. Um, but and- Jeremy Pena was another big name for the Astros. Yep. Uh, the other... Was that the rookie? Was that the rookie Pena? Yes. Oh, Yonder, so he got the MVP. Jordan Alvarez and Justin oh, Alvarez. Verlander were the other yep. two big... Oh, Verlander. And also their their bullpen is amazing. Uh, so I mean that's what I mean that's what killed the Phillies. I was re- obviously rooting Phillies, but all right, go. But the the Red Sox need a lot of work. They need a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of things got to get back. done. Xander is atop my list. You got to get it done. You got to put the C on his jersey too. You got to put that C. So hopefully that the story uh, goes well for them with everything that's going on, and we'll be able to look at more things around baseball on the next program that we have. So. Phil, I want to thank you for joining uh, today. We had a lot to talk about with all of our teams. We want to wish the Celtics and the Bruins and, of course, the Patriots all the health and the best as they continue to ride in their seasons. Anything else you want to add in, Phil? No, I'm just happy. This is one of my favorite times of the year uh, where you can see, like you say, you can see the Bruins. At one, at one point, actually a month ago, maybe, you could watch the Bruins, the all Celtics, four. all four teams. And that was pretty great. But now it's still pretty good, too. Winter sports, is, we're getting into it. I love this time of year, the holidays. As you say, they mess you up. But sometimes it's an exciting a great time way. of the year. It is. Yeah. It's an exciting time of the it's year. Nice. So we'll keep our fingers crossed for everybody. Um, for Phil Healy, for Nick Face, we'll see you next time on another episode of Face the Facts. See you later.